can you just tell me the name of your farm and tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> All right, well, it's nice to have you here, Sarah. I'm Molly Thurston and welcome everyone to Claremont Ranch Organics. We're a seven and a half acre organic orchard located in Lake Country, BC. We grow pears. I'm standing in our old pear orchard right now. We also grow apples, peaches, apricots, and plums. Can you tell me um, why you got into organic farming? Yeah, we had the great fortune in 2005. I was working with uh, a community gardens group and met uh, Bob and Sharon McCubrey through that and started to co-farm with Bob and Sharon who were original founders of the Organic Association here in BC. And the orchard had been certified organic for many years. So we were able to learn with them and farm with them for a couple years prior to purchasing the orchard in 2011. And we've been here ever since, so about 10 years uh, that we've owned the orchard and been farming it organically and making a few changes along the way in terms of the crops that we're growing and the planting styles, which we'll see today. So we're here today specifically to talk about soil health. Can you tell me a little bit about the kind of soil that you have here? For sure, yeah, we've got um, an interesting kind of mix of soils. So the older pear orchard where we are here on the northwest side of the property has a fairly heavy clay soil. So pears really like the heavy soil. And so that's part of why this planting is here. And then when we go below in, in the rest of the orchard, we actually have two different soil types. So we've got a lighter soil that comes from the south end of the property. It's basically a sandy loam soil and it, it's coming from the edge of the property over to about halfway. And then that changes into a heavier clay based soil. And so again, we've got pears planted on, on the one side and uh, apples planted on the other side. And so just trying to kind of match up our crops with the type of soil that we do have. Generally, what I've found is we've got fairly rich soils. Our organic matter, when we've done chemical testing, is um, anywhere from six to eight percent. And um, we've had fairly high calcium uh, in our soils as well, which has been really great for growing the tree fruits uh, because the trees, are, or the fruit rather, really depend on that in terms of quality. And one of the great things about managing the orchard with the, the cover crop intact is that we've had really good um, soil biology and lots of earthworms and lots of beneficial insects and arthropods and other things that are inside the soil. So we've been really happy with how this farm's been managed, I mean, for over 30 years organically. And can you tell me what kind of um, cover crops are planted on your soil here in this pear orchard? Yeah, I mean, in this orchard, you can see that over time, it's mostly become a grass. Um, so we've got a orchard grass and a lot of cooch grass, unfortunately, that's really come in. At one point, there was an intentional seeding of red clover in this block. And the idea being to try to cultivate the legume and be able to mow it and hopefully get some uh, nitrogen fixing from the clovers. Over time, unfortunately, the grass has really outcompeted the clover, so there's very little left. But we do intentionally plant a lot of cover crops before planting our new trees. And some of the combinations I've used over time, um, sometimes it's just been a buckwheat cover crop to smother weeds. And sometimes it's been a combination of white or red clover along with vetch and a ryegrass in order to try to you know, use that as a green manure prior to planting. And then once we've planted, we want to establish a cover crop in the rows to be able to manage the soil, manage erosion, provide an alleyway for the tractor and the machinery to pass through. But then also now with the intention of wanting to plant things specifically in order to be able to create some nutrition uh, for the crop going forward. So I haven't quite figured out what those species are gonna be. You'll notice in one of my young plantings that we can go look at, we do have quite a lot of alfalfa coming up. Yeah, and it's been interesting for me too because I've noticed that as we've pulled out older trees and created more light, and the young plantings, we're getting a lot of alfalfa growing back again too. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see how it's shown up over time. So first let's talk about some things that you've tried on the farm and have worked for you as far as replanting and your success that you've had. And then also if you could share with me some of the things that didn't work, how about? Yeah. Well, it's always good. I mean, honestly, some our failures have probably been our best lessons. And so 
just, you know, while we're standing in this older repair block, I can tell you about one of our probably most colossal fa failures over time in terms of soil management, which was the angio pears are really sensitive uh, to changes in nitrogen and uh, changes in calcium within the fruit itself. And we had tried to bring this block back into life by giving them a really hard prune when we first started but then also by applying some composted chicken manure that we thought would really give it a kickstart and get it going so these are probably getting close to 90 if not 100 years old and so the trees over time the, the pears are amazingly resilient and some of them have these very hollow trunks even that they're able to grow through which amazes me but we weren't getting a lot of regrowth there's not really much happening there it's sort of slowly slowing down over time so We'd wanted to give a, an influx of, of nutrients, we wanted to give them some nitrogen and we ended up coming in in the spring after hard prune, uh, doing uh, a very heavy application of composted chicken manure that um, probably about two tons to the acre was applied. <laughs> And unfortunately for us, as much as the trees grew like crazy, what we found was at harvest time we harvested these big beautiful angio pears uh, put them in bins and sent them out to customers and um, found that they broke down super fast. And so instead of having the nice longevity through the winter storage months, what ended up happening was the fruit really collapsed. We had a ton of rot show up in the bins and the rot just got progressively worse and worse over time. Uh, one pear infecting another pear and basically losing more than half of the crop that year to decay and also to calcium deficiencies, I would say. And we just found that we were kind of full of these horrible disorders, which was not the intention obviously what we learned from that experience was really about like quality of compost um, finding a, a source that is well composted um, and then timing of application and really trying to balance the nutrition so we decided to go from sort of this one great big application to split applications in future years and now what we figured out works for us after almost 15 years of trial and error is that we'll only apply compost every third year and so we'll let a couple seasons go by and we make that application half in the spring half in the fall to mitigate some of that risk of the nitrogen being sucked up into the tree right away and also to mitigate some of the losses that we might have otherwise in the fall and then we try to take a couple years off and manage the growth more so through the pruning foliar nutrition and and some of the other techniques that we're using so that was a good learning curve uh, you know one of the things about the cover crop also growing really fast is that also needs to be managed so you can kind of see behind me right now we're obviously mid-november and so we've given the cover crop a big mow and uh, we run through with an orchard mower uh, generally probably about three times a year you know this year with it being extremely hot we let the cover crop grow a lot higher uh, which I felt helped to mitigate some of the temperatures in the orchard and help to keep the fruit and the canopy cooler before harvest we do try to mow everything down really closely we've got both a orchard mower but we also have a rotary arm on it that can mow in between this larger set of trees doesn't work so well for the younger higher density plantings and so we do a lot of weed whacking in those areas and then of course there's also the question around replanting and like how to manage the cover crop and the weed pressure for the young trees so we can take a look at some of those techniques that we've kind of figured out over the years as well. So I understand this is a block that you um, recently replanted. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened here? It's been a bit of a struggle in this block. Um, this is one of the first blocks that we replanted in the last three years, I would say. So this particular area actually was a buffer of fir trees. So we'd removed the fir and wanted to expand the peach planting, which uh, you can see the older trees behind me and put in a high density soft root block here. And so um, interestingly enough, it is a very thick wet clay soil. So we had not worked this up. We'd removed the trees with the excavator. Uh, we'd come through and tried to work it up the following spring and it was really wet, really heavy. So we ended up just augering holes and putting the trees in. So 
Not super successful. Definitely did some things differently down below in terms of preparation where we tried to learn from this experience and when we augured the holes down below we ended up putting in uh, more peat and organic matter and uh, really tried to help uh, get a little bit lighter soil there that the trees could thrive in but one of the interesting things we did here for weed control because that's been a real struggle with uh, our replanting program is we were finding that the trees were really being competed with the weeds and the, and the different uh, the grasses coming in so we had tried um, this cocoa mat which if you take a look under these trees it actually has proved to be a little bit more successful than thought so even though in the row behind me the grass has grown over what we found when we started excavating around the trees was that the cocoa fiber mat had pretty much remained intact below the trees and provided a good weed barrier uh, for the trees and yet was really permeable for the water to go through and and we were able to continue to irrigate this with a, a drip line uh, as well as micro sprinklers that we'd put in over top. So it ended up being not the end of the world, like it actually worked a little better than I had anticipated, um, but still had a lot of weed management in terms of like mowing around the parts of the orchard. All right, so down here, Sarah, I just wanted to show you kind of the next evolution of our planting plan for replanting and managing the young trees. So we ended up deciding to kind of steal an idea from a lot of the veggie growers and use this plastic mulch cover in order to plant our trees into. So we laid the beds similar to veggie beds would be laid and ended up planting the rootstock directly into the plastic running a tea tape underneath and so in order to prepare this particular part of the orchard we ended up doing a lot of sort of pre-planning for the fertilizer basically going in uh, doing some tillage preparing the area with the rototiller, adding compost, uh, then adding some more um, ground nutrition. Uh, basically, we're taking a number of different products, bred in here and then rototill in, and did that with our dolomite lime applications prior to planting, and then created the hills popped in the, the drip tape and planted right onto that plastic. It's worked pretty well in terms of managing um, weed competition, but it also has worked really well in terms of managing the moisture underneath the plastic because we've been able to find that even though I had concerns that the black plastic might end up burning the root or the lower portion of the tree trunk, it actually ended up doing a very good job through the drought of maintaining moisture under the black plastic, not having the high levels of evaporation and we were able to water a lot less than we anticipated and still maintain good soil moisture and get pretty good tree growth on it. So the plastic so far has lasted us uh, two years in the other planting and I am thinking I may even leave it intact for year three before, you know, we'll probably cut it mid-season raise the irrigation to a drop down micro sprinkler and then we'll try to also establish the cover crop in between. I mean you can probably see behind me there's an awful lot of thistle and uh, lots of weeds coming up and I think this is maybe also one of the byproducts of doing that tillage as well as adding some of the manure this year it's really exploded and I'm wondering whether or not we're getting some weed seeds in with some of those products that we're importing to the farm or if it's just kind of in the latent you know seed bed that's been there forever but it's created a little bit of a management problem in here and obviously is something that I'd like to try to work on for next season, which is once there's some irrigation here, then um, trellis is in, higher irrigation is in, then I think I'll be able to establish a cover crop. But this season was just too dry and I didn't want to take the risk of trying to seed something without any water to be able to get it in with. So Sarah, these trees are ambrosias. They were planted two years ago. Uh, they're bench grafted, same as the trees we just looked at in the smaller block. And um, they've grown really well over the last couple of years. I'm pretty happy 
with it. I'm actually using a different rootstock here. This is a Cornell Geneva 214, so something with a little more vigor, but also it's a rootstock that's meant to be fire blight and replant disease resistant. So again, you know, just trying to manage old orchard soil with some different techniques and ideally, you know, even though we're planting back into apples and this was apples many years ago, hopefully this rootstock will come through. But you can see the plastic uh, with the drip tape still underneath it, the T tape. And this has lasted for two years. I mean, it's not perfect. It definitely is having some weed breakthrough at this point, but I'm pretty happy with how we've been able to get the trees established, get them growing. In terms of nutrition, I think it's fared all right. I mean, obviously it hasn't been possible for us to be able to apply nutrients over top of the plastic. But what we've done instead is we set up a really simple fertigation system this year, it cost us about $60 and we're able to mix up uh, water soluble or liquid nutrients. And generally what we're using is seaweed, we're using fish fertilizers, um, those organic approved amendments, and we're sending them in the water through that fertigation system to be able to feed underneath the plastic and keep the trees going. So that's been a pretty decent solution for us and has actually proved to be not very time consuming and has helped us to be able to maintain the growth and you know not have as much of that like loss of potential nutrition and soil quality as i thought we might have all right so sarah i thought we would come over and just look a little bit at the machinery that we're using in the orchard that I mentioned when we were out in the pears. So um, to manage the cover crop and, and mow down any weeds and that really, I mean, everyone's familiar with the, the weed whacker and that's what we're using right up close to a lot of the higher density trees. And we'll use it a little bit within the row, but we were really fortunate with the environmental farm plan to be able to get some funding towards a new mower. So we got this finishing mower, but we also were able to get this uh, sidearm uh, attachment for it. So it definitely makes life a lot easier in that we can mow down the main um, alleyway of the orchard and also get in between the bigger trees with the sidearm. And then if it's not quite enough cleanup or you know in, in the blocks where we have a bit of rodent pressure then we'll use the weed whacker in order to be able to get in between the trees a little better and certainly helps to clean things up. One of the other ways that we really try to put nutrients back into the soil is by flail mowing all of the branches that we can get through the mower in the early spring so anything that's left over from pruning time we will drop and rake out into the alley and then run the mower through and leave that wood in order to decompose in smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. 